Hi, and welcome everyone to the question and answer session for the call to artists for public art in Copley Square Park. As a reminder, we're going to be recording this session. To access closed captioning, you can click the CC icon in the bottom toolbar. And if you need any help with that, just um, send us a chat. My name is Sarah Rodrigo, and I'm the Senior Public Art Project Manager in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. I use the She Series. I'm joined today with my colleagues, um, by my colleagues. Uh, do y'all want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'll start. My name is Amber Torres. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm a public art project manager with the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Hi, everyone. I'm Christina McGeehan. I use the She Series and I'm the communications director for the Arts and Culture Office. Thanks. So the city of Boston um, and through our office has done a lot of work related to public art in the past decade including updating our public art policies and procedures, refining our understanding of what public art is and could be, and examining the gaps in the city's public art landscape. In the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, we've commissioned artists to create many new public art projects in the last several years, and there are more projects in the pipeline, including soon this one. Um, and I think Christina or Amber will be adding um, some image credits to the chat. You can see on the bottom of the screen that this is a sample of recent commissions, including Together by Mizikar at the Engagement Center, Within Web by Matthew Hinsman at the JP branch of the BPL, and Curtis Hall, BCYF campus at JP, ROXBURY by Joe Wordwell with Nikia Hill and the 826 Boston Y Lab writers. Um, that's cited at the Roxbury branch of the BPL in Nubian Square. Love Thyself by Marka27 in Grove Hall in Dorchester, Crisscross Signal Spire by Mijin Yoon in Nubian Square in Roxbury, that's by the Bowling Building, and You Are Loved by Alex Cook at the Engagement Center in New Market. The call to artists we're discussing today is for a series of public artworks at the soon to be renovated Copley Square Park. Through this call, we have several opportunities for artists to bring poetry, light projections, ground plane interventions, and a small sculpture series to the park. The full call to artists document can be found on our website and in the submittable application. We'll paste a link to the chat here too if you'd like to follow along on your own. Our plan for this meeting is to review the call and the submittable application form, then answer any questions you may have. We'll do our best to answer your questions today, but we may also note them and respond in a frequently asked questions document that will be posted on our website by Friday, July 29th. Please feel free to post questions in the Q&A box in this Zoom as we go along, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So this is the title page of the call. Um, the next page is the table of contents. And then the first page, of actual content in the call contains the basic information like the budget, eligibility, and important dates to be aware of. For example, the deadline to submit questions is Tuesday, July 26th, and the day the call closes, which is Friday, August 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. One important thing to note is that while we'll accept applications right up to the deadline, I strongly encourage artists cannot emphasize this enough, to apply well in advance because too many submissions at the same time can cause the website to crash. And if you have any technical difficulties with the submittable platform, it's very difficult for us to help out um, if you're right up against that deadline. The next several pages give some background on the Back Bay neighborhood and the history of Copley Square Park. The Back Bay is a landfilled protected historic district situated along the Charles River, adjacent to the Public Garden and to the Fenway neighborhood. It connects neighborhoods through major biking, bus, and train routes, as well as Newbury Street, Boylston Street, and Commonwealth Avenue. It's also home to several famous buildings, including the, the Prudential Center, 
the John Hancock Tower, Trinity Church, and the central branch of the Boston Public Library, as well as the location of the finish line for the world-renowned Boston Marathon. Copley Square Park is located in the heart of the Back Bay neighborhood and is a beloved destination for residents, visitors, commuters, and many others. The green space is frequented by residents and visitors, and it hosts several well-known events throughout the year, including Boston's first night festival, the Donna Summer Disco Party, Boston Open Streets, the Boston Marathon, the largest farmer's market in Boston, and numerous other celebrations, protests, and vigils. Copley Square Park is currently undergoing a major redesign effort, and the art will be installed in this new setting. Many of the existing park program areas will be part of the new design, which includes a revitalized fountain, new lawn areas, a spacious plaza, lush gardens, and a new raised platform allowing people to gather among the existing trees and enjoy different views of the park. An important thing for applicants of this call to consider is that the park currently contains five existing artworks. The Tortoise and the Hare by artist Nancy Schoen, created in 1995. The Khalil Gibran Memorial, created in 1977 by the subject's nephew, also named Khalil Gibran. The Boston Marathon Centennial Monument, created in 1996 by Robert Lamb, Robert Schur, and Mark Flannery. The statue of John Singleton Copley by Lewis Cohen, installed in 2002, and the Daniel J. Ahern Jr. Memorial, which is unattributed and was installed in 1996. The page on the right has several renderings of the renovated park. You can see that's on page six, as well as the site plan for the existing artworks. For a full description and visuals regarding the park redesign, um, which is being managed by the Boston Parks and Recreation Department, and uh, designed by Sasaki Associates, you can visit boston.gov forward slash Copley dash improvements. And I think we're gonna add that link to the chat. The next two pages focus on the artwork theme, which is community solidarity, empathy, and acknowledgement of loss. Through the call to artists for this project, we seek to commission artworks that will help create a welcoming space for communal gathering. The artworks will express communal solidarity and response to violence, and will prioritize the experience of people across all neighborhoods of Boston so that they can gather and reflect. This theme emerged during the One Boston Resilience Project, which we call OBRP. OBRP was a four month long community engaged process that began in 2018 and was held to get community input on an artwork honoring the resilience of Bostonians after the marathon bombings in 2014. There have been several other city led projects related to the Boston marathon bombings, including the creation of Martin's Park in the seaport and the Boylston Street markers by Pablo Eduardo. The markers were separately commissioned by the city of Boston to honor and remember the three lives that were lost on Boylston Street on April 15th, 2013. Following the Boston Marathon bombings, the city made a commitment to create an artwork in response to the tragedy, which led to the One Boston Resilience Project. The OBRP was led by the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture with Archipelago Strategies Group, Louis D. Brown Peace Institute, and a mayoral appointed advisory committee, which included members of the broader survivor community, advocates and healers of Boston. The process included listening sessions in Back Bay, Jamaica Plain, East Boston and Dorchester, open community meetings, digital outreach, creative and participatory activities in multiple languages and an online survey. Through this process, the city considered ways to recognize the impact of violence and loss in our lives and how we build resilience, not just as individuals, but as a community. Ultimately, we learned that residents want an artwork to be a welcoming space for communal gathering, a space for individual reflection and contemplation, incorporating trees and green space, and evoking the emotions of empathy, unity, and acknowledgement of loss. 
You can read the full report on our website and we'll also drop a link in the chat. Page eight through 12 is where we talk about the different opportunities that make up the call. The artworks will be installed during the renovation and artists will need to be carefully coordinated with the Copley Square Park design team, including Boston Parks and Recreation Department and Sasaki Associates. Failure to meet project deadlines may result in a removal of the artworks from the project. So that coordination is really important. You're welcome to apply for as many of these opportunities as you're interested in. And again, all of these opportunities are focused around the theme that we just reviewed on the previous pages. So the first opportunity listed in the call is the poetry piece of the project. Up to three poets will be selected to craft new poems that reflect the spirit of the One Boston Resilience Project. The budget is $5,000 per poet. Final text will be installed in locations within the park in collaboration with the landscape architect or other artists. Some possible methods for including poetry in the park include carving, inlays, and projections. Poets will not be required to oversee the installation, but will be included in the process. Artists who plan to submit a proposal for sculpture, lighting design, or walkway design, which are the three other opportunities, are also invited to team with poets to submit a proposal or to indicate their willingness to work with a poet selected by the city. The application requirements for poetry are listed on that page and we'll go into more detail about those in a little bit. The next page, page 10, outlines the small scale sculpture component of the project. One artist to create a series of small scale site specific sculptures to be installed within the newly renovated park. The budget for this is $150,000. Sculptures should be constructed of materials appropriate for long-term installation in humid continental climate conditions in a very busy park. Artists are encouraged to take advantage of sight lines within the square and how they're articulated within the design. Artists should consider how their newly created works will interface and be in dialogue with both the existing artworks that we talked about earlier and the other new commissions. The next opportunity is the light projections component, which is an opportunity for one artist to submit an initial project concept for light projections, including hardware within the newly renovated Copley Square Park. The budget for this is $100,000. Designs should create opportunities that provide audiences with a welcoming space for communal gathering and a space for individual reflection and contemplation and should evoke the emotions of empathy, unity, and acknowledgement of loss. The lighting plan for the renovated park includes multiple styles of light posts to provide appropriate illumination for all areas of the park. These posts can, accom can accommodate the addition of gobo projection lamps. Close coordination with the design team, including lighting designers, will be required. The artist should plan for the design to accommodate the possibility of future commissions for emerging public artists being incorporated into the projection schedule. And on page 12, we explain the pavers and walkways opportunity, which is the fourth opportunity. Artists are invited to, to submit proposals for interventions into the pavers and walkways of the park with a budget of $75,000. Potential options include patterns in concrete unit pavers, patterns or inclusions in cast in place concrete walkways, and imprint in cast concrete pavers or cast in place walkways. You're also welcome to propose something other than these options. Um, if you'd like, we're open to proposals. Before we move on to the project schedule and the application details, I'm going to go over something really quickly that's not in the call, which is vendor registration. A vendor ID is required as part of the contracting process for all of these opportunities. And you can actually begin this process um, now if you don't already have an existing vendor ID with the city. It's free. Um, it's relatively, relatively painless. <laughs> I say relatively, um, to register for a vendor ID, 
you visit the city supplier portal, which you can see a screenshot of here, and fill out an online form with your information. You can find that link on boston.gov forward slash procurement. We highly encourage anyone interested in these opportunities or other opportunities with our office to begin the vendor registration process now, and that will expedite um, your process should you be selected for this project or for other ones um, that we offer. All right, back to the call. So moving on, page 13, um, we have the artist commissioning process and the project schedule. That's on page 14. You'll see on the left-hand side um, that we're currently in step one. The application is open. In August, the application will close and we'll review all the submissions. We may select finalists to participate in an interview process and artists will be notified about the status of their applications in September and the selected artists will be commissioned in October. The Boston Art Commission will review all of our recommended finalists and will vote to approve the artist selections at a public meeting. Then we'll begin the project schedule, which you see on the right. The contracting process will begin in October and the artists will work on creating a preliminary design in October and November. This is also the time, excuse me, when they'll be doing site research, community engagement and collaborating with the city working group, um, the design team and other project partners. The BAC will review and vote on the artist preliminary design at their November meeting. And the final design period will run from December, 2022 through March, 2023. The artists will be expected to carry out additional community engagement and coordination with the city working group during this time. In April of 2023, the Boston Art Commission will review and vote on the final design, which will include plans for fabrication installation. And then in May, the fabrication process will begin. Um, it will run through fall of 2023 when the artists will be expected to update the BAC at midpoint and the artwork will be installed through September and October of 2023, after which the BAC will vote to accession the artwork into the city's public art collection in November. These dates are subject to change based on the construction schedule of the park itself um, and other factors, but this is the schedule we have um, right now. And then, what most of you are probably here to hear about as well is what you need to apply. So on page 15, we go into more detail about the various application requirements that are listed on the individual opportunity pages. All applicants are required to submit an artist description, which is a biography, statement, resume, CV, or other document that describes the artist's background and experience. For teams, include information for all team members, we accept up to five files here. Then we want a 300 to 500 word written proposal. This is where we want you to describe your initial artistic concept for this site, why you're interested in this opportunity, what connection you have to the site or the neighborhood or theme, and any specific or unique processes you might use for the project. If you're applying for multiple opportunities that differ conceptually, such as light projections and a poetry installation, please provide an initial project concept for each design. Next, we wanna see five to 10 samples of completed past work that you feel is relevant to the opportunity that you're applying for. We're asking you to submit one image or poem per file. We also accept videos and ask you to keep those at two minute maximum each. Please note that we don't want you to submit poems, written ones already, drawings or designs made specifically for this opportunity or for this park, um, because doing so will lead to your disqualification. To go along with your work samples um, for visual artists, we'd like to see an annotated image list with the title, media, dimensions, location, date, brief description, your role in the project, if you were the lead, if you were an assistant, um, what work you did on the project, and any other information that might be relevant. Again, if you're applying for the poetry component, as a poet, you do not need to submit this. Moving on to page 16, we're asking for a preliminary budget. This should be an estimated budget of project expenses based on the information provided in this call. You can use the template and the appendices as a starting point and change it to suit your needs. 
And then finally, we're looking for a diversity and inclusion plan. The city of Boston is committed to ensuring that vendors who work on the city's behalf utilize procurement practices that are fully open to the inclusion of small and local businesses, including small local business enterprises, minority business enterprises, women business enterprises, and veteran owned small business enterprises. For this part of the application, we want you to describe the efforts that you have taken or will take to ensure that your selection of subcontractors and suppliers for this contract will be meaningfully open to such companies. If you will not utilize subcontractors or suppliers on this particular contract, please describe any efforts or practices of your company um, or yourself over the past two years that demonstrate a practice of making subcontracting and supplier opportunities available to such companies. In describing your plan, please include specifics. And on page 17, we delve a bit deeper into the criteria for the projects. We want submissions from artists and poets that have strong original artistic vision and who demonstrate experience in community engagement and public art. Applicants' experience and narrative proposals should align with the City of Boston's curatorial vision, which was drafted by the Boston Art Commission. You can read the entire curatorial vision in the call document, which you can see here in the blue text, um, as well as on our website at boston.gov forward slash public dash art. Proposals should also show consideration of the site and the theme, and samples of past work should demonstrate capacity for the artwork as described in the written proposal. And finally, we're seeking artists to lead projects. We appreciate that artists may have managers, administrators, or gallery representatives assisting them, but we'll contract with artists directly. In terms of things we don't want, we believe artists should be paid for their design work. And so we're only accepting written proposals, that written narrative that I mentioned a few moments ago. Applications that include design pro proposals for this project um, or poems already written specifically for this project cannot be considered. We also believe that artists should be credited for their work and we may reject submissions that contain images of other artists' creative works without crediting them or clearly identifying the submitter's role. Proposals that don't specifically connect to the neighborhood project or site and proposals that don't include any artwork that could reasonably work in this site, any past works that show experience that applies um, will not be accepted. Whew, we're almost there. On page 18, we list out a series of links that will be useful to you in learning more about the project and submitting your application. We also include information about the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture and the Boston Art Commission. On page 19, we have information about submitting questions. So you'll see information about our virtual info sessions. We have this one right now, but we're also having um, another tonight at six o'clock. And we have a question and answer form that you can submit questions through. You can also email questions to me at sarah.rodrigo at boston.gov. And we'll be accepting questions until Tuesday, July 26th at 5 p.m. A written Q&A and recordings of the info sessions will be posted to our website and the submittable application by Friday, July 29th at 5 p.m. If you have technical questions about the submittable platform or application, meaning you're having issues with uploads, um, those types of technical questions, we can accept those up to the deadline. But again, we strongly encourage you to submit your application early so that we can do our best to help you if you run into issues with your submission. It's really difficult to troubleshoot issues close to the deadline and we cannot accept any late submissions. Just a reminder, that deadline is Friday, August 5th at 5 p.m. Then at the end of the call, we have an appendix, which includes the budget template. Um, we've included that here on the right so that you can kind of see what that looks like. The total listed is, is zero. Um, you can use this, you can change it, modify it however is needed. Um, there's also a sample contract so you can get a sense of what that process is like, excuse me, a sample commissioning agreement. Um, the contract is the city's standard contract but the commissioning agreement will be attached to it. 
And now, um, Amber is going to show you the actual application on Submittable and walk that through us. Artists have to use the Submittable platform online to apply. Um, you can see here at the landing screen. And I think Amber, you're gonna take over the screen share. I'll stop and just walk us quickly through that application. You're muted. I'm muted. Look at that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, is my screen viewable? That's what I was wondering. Great. Awesome. All right. So this is the application for the call. It starts with an introduction with basic information that you found in the PDF already, but it is here and accessible for easy and quick reference. We begin the application asking for your contact information and demographic information. And then you are asked to confirm your age. If you are under the age of 18, the application will close. However, once you select your age, you will then be um, prompted to continue the application, continuing on with demographic information and then submitting your application materials. And that's it. Um, of course, the, bu the budget, um, the diversity and inclusion plan are there at the end of the application. And then you just go ahead and click submit. Very straightforward. Once again, you're going to have to register with Submittable, so make sure to take care of that. But let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, let us know. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Awesome. Thanks, Amber. Um, I should also mention that uh, we can provide, if, if requested, translation of the application um, and other materials. And now on to questions. And I think I see that we do have a few in the Q&A already. I'll read the first question that we got during the presentation from uh, a attendee that mm -hmm. said, well, they introduced themselves. Um, it's Roger Mitchell from the Institute of Digital Archaeology. May we submit video material in support of our application? Is it best to do so through Vimeo or some other hosting platform? Very excited about possibly doing something in my hometown after all these years. Thank you. That is a great question. You can submit videos um, for work samples. And I think there may be a few other options in the submittable application where there are places that you can submit. Everything has to come through submittable. So um, honestly, I'm not super well equipped to answer the question. Maybe Christina could about the difference between Vimeo or other hosting platform, but everything we need has to be in submittable, right? Yep. And I'll just add, so the work sample question is a file upload and submittable. So you can either submit the actual video file, or if you want to submit a link to Vimeo or YouTube or Dropbox, that's fine. I would just recommend maybe pasting those links in like a Word document or some other PDF document and then uploading that so that we can just click the link. And then my only other recommendation would be to make sure that it's public um, and that whatever privacy settings are turned off so that anybody can access it just by clicking the link. Awesome. Thanks, Christina. And I'll just remind you that uh, we do have a two minute long limit on videos. And that's really just about the potential volume of applications and reviewers, reviewers time. So um, the next question, we posted many fabulous links. Um, I see a question that says, since pavers will be from the manufacturer already being used in the walkways, are these pavers already factored into the landscaping budget? If not, how do we budget for them? Or should we only budget a square foot price for sandblasting or imprinting? Great question. My understanding is that the pavers are factored in. They are a specific paver. So some of this is up to the artist. If you're looking to use a different type of paver, you'd need to factor that in. Um, otherwise, it could just be your time for creating patter patterns out of the existing pavers that have already been um, specified. Um, and then for, for budgeting for sandblasting or imprinting, um, again, that's, it depends on, on what you're looking to do. So a little bit hard to answer uh, that question because it's about a lot of, well, if, but if, you know, those types of things, but I would say 
there are papers in the budget to summarize. There are papers already in the landscaping budget that have been specified if artists are happy with whatever those are. And I don't know that we have that information at this point um, in the park design. So it's, you know, going to be a, a bit of a, an unknown um, until those are specified and actually purchased through that process. If you're happy with, with whatever they end up with and working within those parameters, great, then you don't have to budget for favors. If you want to do something different, if you have specific materials in mind, if you wanna, you know, depending on what you wanna do, then, then budget for that. I hope I answered that. <laughs> that was a bit rambling. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> and Sarah, there were one question was submitted before that too in the chat. Oh. Um, I can read it. It says, Great. is it possible to make a joint sculpture slash poetry submission? And what is meant by sp small sculptures? What is the anticipated scale? Great question. Yes, joint poetry and sculpture submission. I mean, that's that's part of what we're looking for is for people to team together, um, you know, and submit poems and visual arts proposals together. We're happy with, with either people submitting separately, um, but we're also glad to see people starting to work together and create some of these connections across the park potentially. I don't know that there is a specific scale in mind in terms of numbers. I would recommend that artists think about um, all of the different programs that are in this park, as well as the existing artworks. Um, when we say, small, uh, we're definitely not intending there to be um, really large, super monumental um, additions to what is a, a pretty busy park. Um, so yeah, no specific numbers that I can give you or dimensions, but think smaller, um, think about the theme, really think about the theme and, and the space as a whole. Um, when you're crafting your narrative proposal. Sure, you're welcome. Um, so I'm seeing another one in the chat that says, as a poet who never participated in a public art project, how would I go about putting together a budget proposal? Are there guidelines or estimates provided in the documents? Um, so we do provide that budget. I can go back to it. Um, the budget template, which is really, as you'll see, largely geared towards uh, public artworks, like actual physical artworks. But for poets, I would say you want to include some, some of your time for coordinating and working with the design team, because part of what the poets will be doing, they may not be involved in the installation, but they may be involved with helping integrate the poems into the park and reviewing designs and and of course, there's gonna be community engagement aspects of this, um, as well as the actual work that you do as a writer. So that's the, the guidelines I would give you in terms of thinking about the budget and the estimates. Um, I think that you know we could think about that a little bit more as well um, amongst our team. We have other members of our office who are experienced in working with poets, so we might throw that question to them and give you more information in the Q&A, the document that we're gonna be posting. Sure. All right, so, oh my gosh, we have a lot of open <laughs> open questions as well. I could read the first one for you. Uh, awesome. For the light projections, can it project videos with or without sound? So I, you know what? I'm gonna get back to you on that one. I think let's, Let's look into this with the design team more um, before we answer that question. Sorry, anonymous. <laughs> we will we'll post the answer to that one um, with the the Q and A. The next question is: I joined a bit late, so maybe I missed it. But for the pavers project, is there a site plan that would be that would provide an idea of what areas will be paved, what the dimensions will be? Yeah, so I would point you towards at this point the um, Boston Parks and Recreation Department's page for this plaza. I think they have the most recent plans would be online. Um, we can double check that and 
post an updated link if we need to, you know, if that's not already there. Um, I know they've gone through a, several rounds of public meetings and the designs have been available, but we can double check and see what, um, what else we can provide for plans. The next question is, do you have word count guidance for the length of poems? We do not. So this goes back to uh, the poets working with the design team. So because the poems could be integrated into the park in any number of ways, we don't have a specific word count guidance at this point. And we're asking poets to work with Sasaki and BPRD, that's Boston Parks and Recreation Department, and with our team to sort of create these parameters um, through the design because this is really site specific. Um, so, and a lot will depend on what font you choose and, and other aspects of it. So right now we don't have a word count guidance um, and we expect the poets will develop that through this process. Awesome. If the project uses unit materials that have been made for a prior project, is it okay to include images of those or is that disqualifying? Let me know if you want me to read that again. Yeah, I, I think what the asker is asking, um, if it, I guess unit materials is a little confusing to me. I'm not sure I, I'm following what that means. Um, yeah, can that participant? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for any clarifications. Please do. If you remember writing that they, question, please. They just yeah. put pavers in the chat. Oh, awesome. Oh, so you're saying if you have a proposed, pro if you're making a proposal for a project that uses the same type of materials as in a previous project, would that be disqualifying? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, we would, for the small sculptures, if someone has done and they're proposing to do, say, um, small granite sculptures and they've done granite sculptures before, we wouldn't disqualify them. So um, I don't think that would be disqualifying, but uh, without more information, it's hard for me to say if you're talking about really specific artworks that you've made into papers that then you're proposing to also install here, that's a little bit that I think we'd have to, to think about. So if you want to send us kind of more, a um, little bit more detail, but I would say in general materials, like if you've used a type of granite paper or a type of concrete paper and you're proposing to use that again, that's fine. Um, if you're talking about a really specific artwork that is a paver, then that's a little bit more challenging um, and it could potentially be disqualifying. Our next question is, is there a scale drawing showing the proposed layout for the renovation? I believe we answered that. So I'm gonna go on to the next question, but feel okay. free to readdress it if you want to for a moment. Um, the next question is, um, I am gathering a team for my installation, but do not have all the names. Can I add the names after winning the submission? Back Bay was my home for 11 years and I'm super excited to submit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, it, if you know, artists work with multiple different uh, subcontractors and team members, and you can certainly add to your team. Um, were you commissioned for the project? You could add to your team after you're commissioned. Um, that's that's not a problem. As long as you're the lead artist, you're the person who, who would be, if you were selected, contracting with us. Um, that's, that's really, we expect people to add. <laughs> their team throughout the process as needed, you know, things change. Will there be a workshop that would help us make a proposal that meets the procurement requirements and filling out the required paperwork, etc.? Uh, we do not have that scheduled and out. We have these two Q&A sessions. Um, I think you know, you could reach out to us with additional questions if we're not touching on things here um, and with support, sort of application support. Uh, we're happy to, to help how we can. You know, there are parameters. We have to be really fair in this process. 
Um, I do see in the chat, there's, you know, someone asked to be connected with the team to help with the vision, um, having an artist meeting. Those are the types of things that would happen after the commissioning. This is a request. This is essentially an RFP process run by the city. So all the information that we're giving you all here now, we have to make sure it's completely publicly available. Um, so we have to make sure everyone has the same information. And so, you know, we can help with technical responses when it comes to um, sort of having artist meeting or, or connecting with Sasaki, things like that individually, you know, that's a bit more challenging, um, especially to include everybody and make sure that information is out there. So we, we do have a specific process we have to follow. We're gonna do our best to help you all and answer all of your questions within those parameters. Um, but some things may not, may not be possible. You know, I don't know. Is there anything either of you wanted to add <laughs> to that? Um, I think if I would add anything, it's just that we do have an admin and finance team in house in the mayor's office of arts and culture. And while they might not be able to walk you through the entire process, if you have a really um, like a, a serious challenge that you're experiencing or a burning question, that could be a, a great resource, um, of course. You know, they might not be able to walk you through the entire process, but I think that they'll they're extremely um, helpful. So, um, yeah, you can find that information on our website as far as who's on that team and, and who to contact. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Amber. Absolutely. I mean, they help people with red to registration process and um, just very, uh, really, really helpful colleagues. So. Awesome. Sorry about that. Thinking of existing artworks in the park, are you looking for pieces that complement what's already been created in terms of the theme slash story? For projections, are you looking for still image or moving image or either? So for projections, either. Um, that's that's up to you. What you want to propose, if it's moving or still, um, you know, content, all of those things. For for what we're commissioning, we want artists to be aware of the existing artworks, but the theme for this project is the one we identified um, back on, I'll scroll back to it again, um, that was developed through the One Boston Resilience Project. Um, and that is the theme for the artwork. So that's, the existing works are something you definitely want to acknowledge um, as, you know, just the same way we, we want you to be aware of the revitalized fountain, um, the raised platforms, all of these existing pieces of, um, of the physical realm, essentially. Uh, but the theme for these artworks, for these commissions is community solidarity, empathy, and acknowledgement of loss. One of the last questions I'm seeing in the Q&A uh, section is what surfaces will be projected onto? BPL exterior wall, question mark? No, the BPL exterior wall is actually across the street. <laughs> so this is, and there are some, uh, you know, parameters around projections, especially that would affect roadways and things like that. We want these to stay within the park. Um, in terms of surfaces, you know, the ground plane, there's definitely opportunities there. Um, we've shared the drawings uh, from parks. And again, if you go to their link, I believe they have a more extensive set of drawings, but the surfaces, we're, we're keeping them within the, the park itself. And I think there was, I see that, People are connecting a little bit in the chat. That's lovely. Um, there were two questions that came in through the chat, Sarah. Um, yeah. One of them is how can poets link with visual artists for collaboration? Yeah, um, really great question. I think, you know, reach out to visual artists. If you know any visual artists, reach out to them. I'm not sure, Christina, what kind of resources we have as an office in terms of um, where we might direct poets to um, in terms of connecting with visual artists. 
Yeah, our, Julia, who is our artist resource manager, might know more about specific like networking resources and opportunities. So we can check with her and see if she has any suggestions um, okay. or if there are like listservs or things that people could be reaching out to. Yeah. And I see that we have an artist who actually um, volunteered as well, which is lovely. <laughs> so connect right here and now. This is a, a good place. Um, and then there was another one that came in. Um, it says, are you hoping that the poets will collaborate with the other artists' forms or that they will be thinking of different ways to install their poems? So we have the option in the application um, for both artists and poets to indicate whether or not they are willing to collaborate or if they're just, you know, um, kind of proposing their own thing and then they'll work with the design team. So we do ask if people are open to that. We're, we are open to, um, to either, you know, to people proposing as teams or proposing as individuals just for whichever opportunity they're interested in. <laughs> this is and great. So this is the place you can come to meet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Christina, go ahead. That's okay. We just got one more. Um, should the artists be thinking about ways to make their works accessible to people with disabilities? For example, should poets be thinking of ways that blind users can experience their works? Yes, I think that's, that's wonderful. I think we should always be thinking about that. Um, the design team will also help people think through that. Um, but 100%, that's, that's something that we should all be considering. Yeah. Are there any guidelines in terms of projectors and hardware to project, or are we choosing this and including it in our budget? So we had we had a consultant working with the team on this project to develop, to develop these opportunities, and that consultant, Matthew Hinsman, was, um, you know, had identified Gobo projectors as probably the most um, appropriate option, but it is really up to the artists who are applying. They would be including it in their budget. That's why we do specify the animate or that, excuse me, I just saw someone post about animation, um, that all the hardware be included in your estimated um, costs, because that is going to rest with the artist um, who's commissioned for the, the light projections. But because of that, it really is up to the artist with the caveat that, of course, it has to work with the existing um, design team's electrical and lighting parameters. So. And we yeah. have somebody whose hand is raised, so I can allow them oh, to sure. unmute if they'd like. Did they? Uh, thank you. Uh, so I suppose this is this is my question too, and it seems to be coming up a lot. I think that a poet, like the poets, probably have a, a vision. But we understand that there has to be an incorporation. So I'm sorry to kind of beat this horse, but I I would need a. Is there a way that we can maybe when you're getting submissions and things like that, create a forum where artists can? Because I know our time is like short, but where mm -hmm. artists can make maybe mingle and buzz like looking for a poet need an idea for this or some sort of forum where we can kind of connect with the other humans that are trying to bring this to life i'm gonna have to and that's okay, ask that's more great. broadly <laughs> about that it's no it's a great question thank you ashley um it really is and i appreciate that you know this is this is uh, clearly something that's, that is desired. Um, I just, I don't know the answer, honestly. Okay, no, that's cool. So it's out there. <laughs> thank you, sorry, I'm gonna go, I'll go back. Oh to, no, uh, thank you, no need to apologize. It's okay. Thank you so much, you guys. This is a really great opportunity. Thank you for being here. All right, I'll give it a minute in case anyone has any other questions.
Um, again, you can always submit. I'm sure you'll think of things. We have another session tonight at six um, where we'll be kind of going through the whole application again um, and then answering questions. And we also have the form um, and we can, I can find and post the link to that one again as well, um, where you can submit questions. If you think of something in the middle of the night, <laughs> you can, uh, you know, just pop it into our Google form and we'll post the answers along with everything else um, on the 29th. I wanted to um, jump in, Sarah. Let me know what you think and if I'm off base. But for the poetry submissions, I'm pretty sure that the only requirement is uh, the written word proposal for how you may respond to the theme if selected and then writing samples. So for the application purposes, at least, you might have been talking about installation um, for the uh, person who just got up and asked a question. So excuse me if I'm misunderstanding, but at least for the application process, um, you don't have to worry about that aspect of the design phase. Um, but if I'm misunderstanding, sorry. <laughs> no, I think that's a good point, Amber, because we are like, we are expecting poets can just apply and then um, at, through the design, once everyone's commissioned through the design phase, be working on all of these bigger questions about how the poems will integrate all of that. I think that maybe, and I'm, I'm also kind of gonna make some, some assumptions that maybe people are just wondering. Um, yeah, see, Ashley said that makes sense. Perfect, perfect. Because I wasn't sure if people were wondering about um, compatibility of working with other people, but it will definitely be in the, the design with the whole design team, with the other artists. Um, you know, that's why we're only asking for that narrative proposal. So thank you, Amber, for clarifying that. That was really helpful. No problem, Sarah. All right, give it another minute and see if anybody has more questions. We got a question in the Q&A right before, you know, Last minute, we love this. Get, get these questions in. Is this a permanent installation? What about rain, snow, etc.? So we don't use the word permanent. Um, we say long term. And yes, this is a long term installation, meaning that we expect them to last five years or more. And all of a sudden, my computer is deciding to try and restart. That's super fun. Um, <laughs> sorry, everyone. So yeah, the, these artworks um, interventions should be lasting um, at least five years. And so that's why we say in the call that we do expect you to think about the fact that, yeah, that we live in New England, there's rain, there's snow. This is a really, really busy park in a very busy neighborhood. Um, so considering when you think about materials or you think about different options, and again, just to reiterate, what Amber just said, we're not asking the poets to think about this. Um, this is the design team and the visual artists who are gonna be working with the materials directly to really take that into account um, when, you're, when you're proposing particular materials um, and approaches. Right. We'll give it another minute because there's good questions always come up in the last couple of minutes. All right. All right, if nobody else has anything right now, again, the forum is open. We'll be back here at six o'clock um, tonight to, to do this again. So 
maybe we'll see some of you back here if you've thought of some new questions. Um, tell your friends and definitely reach out um, in the interim. The deadline, the question deadline is July 26. Please get them in uh, before the 26th and we'll be posting on the 29th. And thank you all for your time today. It's really fabulous questions. Um, and we have some work to do <laughs> to answer a few of them. So thanks very much, everybody.